What's going on everyone? This is your boy Chan Inerva from the Philippines and for today's video we will talk about the American bully standards. I believe that this is one of the most important thing that we should all know before owning an American bully. Um, even for the people who already have American bullies like me and like many other countless other people around the world already owning American bullies, it is a must that we all know the American bully standards. So without much further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the general impression. The American bully should give an imp the impression of great strength for its size. It is compact and medium or large sized dog with a muscular body and blocky head. The American bully should have the appearance of heavy bone structure with a bulky build and look. That general impression, those three sentences, I think, three, yeah, three sentences, it's very important for us to know by heart that an American bully should give us all an impression or a lasting impression that this dog breed is not, this breed of dog is not frail looking it's not thin type of dog it's a bulky muscular strong type of Amer uh, of dog breed so it should give that impression right away all right the american bully is a companion breed exhibiting confidence a zest for life along with an exuberant willingness to please and bond with their family thus making the American bully an excellent family companion. Despite its build, despite its, its um bulky look, despite its um great strength, the best thing and the reason why American bully is one of the fastest growing breed in the world is because of its character, its willingness to bond, its um, its being a family breed. You know what I mean? Despite the American bully's fierce and powerful appearance, its demeanor is very gentle. That's why you always hear the term gentle beast, gentle monster. You know, they are great with kids and extremely friendly with strangers to the point that people even say you can easily steal an American bully because it's really friendly to people, other dogs and other animals. Of course, there are, there are some isolated cases because these are animals and, and it also depends on how people raise these animals. So sometimes there are isolated cases where there are incidents, but generally speaking, this breed of dog is very gentle, very friendly, especially to people. Human or dog aggression and extreme shyness or viciousness is not characteristic of an American bully, and this is very undesirable. Again, going back to the general impression and characteristics, the American bully should look bulky, strong, muscular, but at the same time, its character should be very friendly to people, to other animals. That's why it's a perfect family companion. The head of the American bully should be distinct, heavy, large, broad. It means to say that this breed should have, basically, simply put, it should have a big head, a blocky head, that would be proportionate to its muscular and bulky body. Medium in length, dip throughout, Broad, broad skull, well chiseled and very pronounced cheeks, mus cheek muscles, distinct and deep stop. 
I'll show you an example of that type of head. So this is an example of an American bully. Look at that type of head, type of body. It's muscular. The back is short. It's the body is proportioned. You can see the head size in proportion to its body size. All right. And while we're on this slide, I would like to show you a comparison from its ancestors, the American Pit Bull Terrier. As you can see, these are pit bulls, right? We all know that the American Bully came from American Staffordshire Terrier, pit bulls, and some bulldog breeds. So, going back to the general impression, it should not give you an impression that it's a pit bull. If your American bully is still looking like a pit bull, then it might need to catch up. Or if it's looking like a bulldog, then there's something not right because the American bully should not look like a pit bull and it should not look like a bulldog because it is a breed of its own. So for this, I'm just letting you see examples of pit bulls compared to an American bully like this, like this, and like this. And mind you, the three examples that I'm showing you are Nationals winner from 2015, 2016, and 2017. So you can see already the difference between an American bully and pit bulls. All right. So let's get back to the standards. So the ears can be natural or crop. All right. So this pertains to showing your dogs. If you plan to show your dogs, us judges or the registry does don't, doesn't mind if the ears are cropped or it's in it's natural. Eyes, all colors are equally accepted except albinism. Pinkish to red, which is a disqualification. Let me show you an example of that. This one. Okay. As you can see, it's white. Yes, it's white. But the more important matter that you should pay attention to is the lack of pigmentation on the nose, on the eyelids. You know? Because... There are dogs that are white but but are not um, albino, exhibiting albinism because they are white but they have black nose and they have colors on their eyelids. All right. So this is type is one type of albinism, adult dog, and this is a puppy, example of albino puppy. As you can see, no, almost no pigmentation. Pale pink, if I would uh, try to describe the color, as well as the eyelids. All right? So for the eye shape, ABKC wants the shape to be oval to almond. If it's round, then that's undesirable. If it's bulging and protruding, the, eye, the eyes are protruding and bulging, then they are a fault. Alright? Then it is a fault. Visibility of ho should be minimal. These are the faults. Overly visible ho. Both eyes are not much in color. Bulging or protruding eyes. And the disqualifying fault would be 
alb albinism. All right. So for people who wants to show their dogs, it is very important that you know the keywords: undesirable, faults, major faults, and disqualifying faults. All right. This, there are distinction between those terms. All right. Let me show you examples of those eyes. All right. So this is the overly visible haw. First of all, I would like to give a shout out to Susan Fedorsha and Damir Markov for providing me with uh, this uh, PowerPoint slides for the American Bully Standards. So thank you, Susan and Damir. So this is the overly visible hall, wherein the inner part of the lower eyelid is very vis visible. These are also faulty eyes. This is the albinism. Odd eye would be two different colors of eyes. We also don't want the eyes to be set too close, too close, you know, and too wide. There should be a balance like this. All right. So, okay. The muzzle should be short, medium in length, and broad in width. Length to be shorter than the length of the skull, with distance from the tip of the nose to the stop, approximately one third of the distance from the tip of the nose to the occiput but not so short as to interfere with normal breathing. The muzzle is blocky and is slightly squared to fall away abruptly below the eyes. Let me show you an example. So this is the muzzle, right? It should not be pointy. It should be square on this part or blocky. And the length of the muzzle, which is from here to here, should at least be one third of the total diameter from here until there. All right. So the total diameter of this is called the length of the muzzle should be one third of this. So imagine if the length of this muzzle is like half of the, the length of the skull, then that's too long. And if it's already one fourth to one sixteenth, then it's it's too short already. Should be at least one third, and this should be a perfect example of the length of the muzzle. All right. The jaws well defined. The upper jaw should be strong and parallel to the muzzle and never turning upward. Why? Because turning upward is a bulldog trait, and we have American bullies, not bulldog. The lips should be, should be semi-close and even. Minimal looseness accepted but not preferred. All right. So muzzle being too long is a fault. Too snipey is a fault. And muzzle that is so short is also a fault because it will now interfere with the normal breathing. Lack of pronounced cheek and deep stop. Let me, let me go back to that one. This is the cheek. As you can see, it's very obvious. The cheek is very pronounced and it has a deep stop. All right. This is the American bully head. Now, let me show you the difference between the 
pitbull head. Uh, I was able to show you a while ago samples of pitbulls. As you can see, the stop is no longer very deep. You can see? It's sloping, going down, but it doesn't have the abrupt stop here, abrupt fall, like what we have in American bullies. It has a abrupt fall, deep stop, all right? I hope that is clear. So, upper teeth to meet Tightly outside lower teeth in form or scissor bite. So the folds for the teeth and the bites, let me show you the examples. This one. Alright. This is what we're looking for, the scissor type of bite. This is level. This is overshot, meaning the upper portion overlaps with a big gap with a certain amount of gap overlaps the lower jaw all right you can see there and just the opposite of the overshot is the undershot wherein the lower jaw overlaps and has a big gap between the bite this one level this one, Caesar. So we're looking for Caesar. All right. The neck should be heavy, muscular, slightly arch, slightly arch. Um, more commonly known nowadays as the bull neck. People want to have that bull bull neck. People love it. You know, tapering from shoulder to back of the back of the skull. Compact to medium size. We don't want neck that are too thin and ne neck that are too short or too long it should be proportioned four quarters the shoulder should be strong and muscular with wide blade sets with wide blade set wide and well laid back the upper arm is approximately equal to the length of the shoulder all right four legs straight strong sturdy and large bones we want large bones on our american bullies we want strong pasterns they are short and nearly erect feet straightforward never easty easty westy distance from the withers to the elbow is equal to the distance from the elbows of the bottom of the feet so if this is your ideal american bully this part and this part should be equal in leg all right from elbows down the length of that from d to b and from d to c should be the same if we're looking for the perfect structured bully all right quarters upright shoulders steep and forward scapula let me show you an example for that this is an example of that it's protruding it's not you know it's <clears throat> forward scapula shoulder blade the shoulder blade is forward scapula all right that is that is an example of that upper arm is too short feet towing in or out down at the pasterns and splayed feet let me show you an example for that these are the splayed splayed feet or foot for this matter because it's only one and flat we don't want this this is what we try to aim for another set of examples we'd look for this a as correct is slightly bending on this part because it's like the shock absorber and if they try to run this is where they're getting their strength from goatling for the letter b 
C, D, and E are undesirable and some are already false. All right, this one I mentioned a while ago, the turning out of hawks. These are the hawks. This is turning out. Now the opposite is turning in. We don't want that. This is too wide and this is the correct. All right. So for the body, it should be heavily muzzled, mass, massive, bulky body type of, of compact medium length, giving the impression of great power for its size. I mentioned that a while ago. The ribs should be well-rounded, creating a barrel chest with all the ribs close together. Four legs set rather wide apart to permit chest development. It is very important for, a, for an American bully to have a ample chest substance and ample chest width. All right? If your bully dog, if, you're, if your American bully has a very narrow chest, then it is not desirable. Let me show you an example of this is a good wide chest. Now compare it to this. This has no substance and very narrow. That's why, but this is, these are pit bulls, so we should not be able to compare it with the American bully. But for the sake of letting you understand, for American bullies, this is not desirable. The no substance on the chest part. We want this substance for the chest and the width also. All right. Next, the back should be fairly short to medium. Slight sloping from withers to rump or straight accepted with gentle short slope at rump to base of tail. Let me show you again an example of that. This is a short back. It will now have a slope from here and then it will go down from there. All right. A back that is too long is a fault because we're actually aiming for a square type of body structure rear higher rear higher than the withers it's unacceptable imagine this rear is higher than this part then that's that will look like this it's not desirable all right muscular development on angulation width and hind quarters all right so let me show you examples of those angulation. All right. We're trying to aim for this type of angulation. This is over angulated, short upper thigh, long hock, sickle hock, and short lower thigh. I mentioned a while ago the back part, these are the top lines. We're aiming for this. We don't want this. We don't want this. Sway back with dwarfism. We don't want roach back. For American bullies, we don't want roach back. But for other breeds, they would prefer, for example, the, the French Bulldog. They have a slight roach on their back. And then the sway back. We don't want this. All right? The tail. The tail should be medium in comparison to its size. Low set, tapering to, to a fine point and extending approximately to the hock. This should go down to the hock. Alright, if you pull this tail down, it should be in the hock. If it's short, if it's one inch shorter or if it's one inch longer, then that's acceptable. Anything longer or shorter than one inch is already a fault. We want this type of tail. All right. And if we pull it down, it will be on the hawk. All right. Is when you see the tail pointing towards the back, it's gay tail. If this tail just go up and up to here, then just that's just a challenge tail 
and if it's not pointing down to the back part then it's still just challenge and it's not gay tail all right the feet should be rounded and of moderate size in proportion to the dog compact well arc and tight or flat feet and long toes are faults the coat should be short glossy close stiff to smooth to the touch whenever you see an american bully with long coat then that there's something wrong with it all right or maybe there's another breed mixed into that the color and pattern all colors and patterns are permissible except the pattern merle let me show you an example for that most of you i know knows what a merle dog is but some of you are mistaken with white dogs with tickings the white dogs with black tickings is not a merle pattern this is the merle pattern wherein you can see tan lines you can see blue you can see some brindle a mix of everything this is the usual color for our usual pattern for merle all right i hope that's clear your white dog with black tickings is not a merle dog merle pattern dog all right third male 17 inches to 20 inches all right what does that mean it means that for males if this bully reaches from here to here 17 inches then it's a standard dog all right if it reaches 19 from 17 to 19 then that's a standard dog anything below 17 inches should be considered pocket if it's more than 19 it should be xl all right a pocket a standard and an XL dog should all look the same bone structure body mass head size and everything except for one factor the height which is measured from their withers which is measured from this part the withers down i hope that is clear okay let me repeat that the pocket the standard and the XL should all possess the same mass bone mass bulkiness big head except for one major factor height all right so the pocket should be like I said under 17 inches XL should be 20 over 20 20 and up should be considered XL already all right I stand corrected I said 19 a while ago but if it's for males if it reaches 20 then it's already an XL bully uh, for females if it reaches 19 then it is already an XL female all right the American bully moves with confident and proud attitude while keenly alive and alert to its surroundings. Gait should be effortless and powerful. Let me show you an example of an ideal, I'm not saying perfect, but an ideal movement for an American bully. All right, two American bullies with effortless gating, as you can see, no paddling of course no rolling no side winding all right let me repeat that you can see them effortless powerful no dragging no pacing no canter you know just trotting nice gait again for the last time this is what an ideal movement of an, of an American bully should look like. Why am I trying to emphasize on the movement? Because some people who are new to the breed, they're trying to compare 
and looking for the gating style of other breeds to the American Bully. If you have a miniature pincher who is having hack hackney action while it's gating, you should not look that look for that for America in American bullies because this is how an American bully should move. It is powerful and effortless considering its body. We should also not compare how a Doberman pincher or a Shih Tzu or any other breed for that matter to the American bully movement. So if you're showing your dogs, it is a must that you know the faults. Both eyes are not much in color, then that's self-explanatory. And I showed that a while ago, overly visible haw, bulging, protruding eyes, muscle too long and snipey, you know that, lack of pronounced and deep stuff. I've, I've showed you a comparison between pit bulls and American bully on that one. Weak under jaw. Sometimes the jaws are not even closing, then that's a fault. Under jaw turning up, that's for bulldogs. Albinism, I showed you an example for that. Nose turning up, let me show you that right now. These are examples of uh, head types and the muzzle. This is the correct, as much as possible. It should look like this. Snipey. Terrier type, white terrier type, the American Pitbull Terrier is almost look like almost looks like this. Weak jaw, there's a chance that it can't be closed properly. Undershot, you can see the under jaw is overlapping the upper one. It's too short. This is bulldog type and mastiff like. Alright? tail it's self-explanatory I showed you the type of bites a while ago overshot undershot prime mouth cross bite neck too thin neck too short upright shoulders steep and forward scapula I showed you the example of that upper arm too short remember the upper arm and the elbow to the ground should be proportioned it should be equal in length if we're looking for the perfect Structure, severe turn fronts in and out, more commonly known as the easty westy, bowed front legs, down at the pasterns, weak pasterns, and splayed feet. Long toes, hocks turning out, I showed you that a while ago. Curly and wavy coat, those are very obvious. If you see that, then there's something wrong. Canine movement. For those who still don't know, but this is how the different types of movement for dog. Simply put, this is just walking, alright? Just walking, but we want gating. Walk, 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 German Shepherd walking. Now this is the trot, maybe known also as gate. This is what we want. All right, the diagonal legs move at the same time. So, meaning the left front and the right back legs are moving at the same time. And the opposite, as you can see. All right. Again, the right front leg and the left back leg are moving at the same time. It's trotting or gating. All right. <clears throat> Another example. Okay. Now we don't want this one. When the American bully is doing this, then it's not. It's a fault. Same side moving at the same time. We can see the left legs, the left front and back legs are moving the same time. Boom. The right, boom. The left, boom. This is spacing. We don't want that in our bullies. All right. Again, example of pacing. And look at the canter. Canter is when this is the 
No, this is trot. And later, it will go to canter movement. Canter meaning the both front legs trot and it will go to canter. Both front legs, the same. Legs together, back together. Front together, back together. All right. Knee action. Trying to like kick before moving. All right. This is the hackney action. For those people who doesn't know, who don't know what hackney action is, this is the hackney action. Of course, we don't want that in our American bullies, but for the pinchers, they love that. So serious faults, we don't want king tail twisted, knotted. Of course, we I showed you what an ideal tail a while ago. This qualification, this is very important. Displaying and possessing aggressive behavior. This one, I don't give an excuse if it shows aggression towards me as a judge then it's dq right away disqualified pink albino eyes you know that merle pattern you know already you know that already unilateral or bilateral kiprokidism cryptorchidism meaning one or two balls only uh, no one ball or no balls at all then that's disqualification unilateral and bilateral deafness that's why you see sometimes you see us judges trying to get the dog's attention so we can see if it's um deaf or not screwed bobtail ducktail we don't want that all right so these are examples of american bullies you can see this uh, they are very consistent through the years all right <clears throat> this is a classic as you can see, it may lack a little bit of the chest width and bones and maybe body mass, but it still doesn't look like a pit bull at all. It's still a bully head, but maybe a little bit um, lighter on the body frame. The same thing with Castro. Castro is a beautiful dog and this is what I mentioned a while ago about the black dog or white dog with black tickings. It's not Merle. It's just black with tickings or white with black tickings. All right. So it may lack in comparison to standard some mass or bones but still not looking like a pit bull. This is a very beautiful dog. And now if it's an XL it should look like this it should still have to possess it should still possess the big head big bones and big body the xl american bully should not be i repeat should not be a tall pit bull all right it should still look like this massive blocky chest width bone mass big head you know square muzzle and tall all right i repeat an excel american bully should not look like a tall pit bull a pocket one should look like this still possessing mass gorilla neck straight top line with good angulation mass not too short of a muzzle you know it possesses everything the xl and the standard all right mufasa and then grand champion bear so as you can see they don't look like pit bulls they don't look like bulldogs they don't look like american um french bulldogs rocco I'm showing Rocco because Rocco is a very massive dog but still possessing that sound structure. Angulation, straight front legs, big bones, big head, not too short of a muzzle, great top line. Okay, so guys, this presentation is about to end. I hope I'm able to clarify and share some of the things when it pertains to the American bully standard
I know I'm not able to explain everything, but due to time constraints, and I don't want information overload. Anyway, this presentation is public and it can easily be accessible in the ABKC website. It may not be the same exact presentation, but the standards is written in our ABKC website, so you can have that as your reference. And I hope you enjoy your American bullies, love the American bullies, and I hope I was able to help explain some of the important things about the American bully. See you in the next video. And stay classy, guys.